when you focus on the breath. Try to make it as comfortable as you can and be determined to stay with the breath all the way in, all the way out. Smooth it out. You're giving the mind good food here because the mind, like the body, has both healthy food and unhealthy food. We know what happens to the body when you feed it unhealthy food. But people don't pay much attention to what happens when they feed their minds unhealthy food. The Buddha says there are three kinds altogether of metal food. There's contact at the senses, there's your awareness at the senses, and then there are your intentions. Most of us go for the contact. Nice sounds, nice smells, nice tastes, nice sounds, nice tactile sensations. And we feed off of these things. This is where the little screens that we have in our pockets are so compelling, because we can get any kind of picture we want on them now. We can follow our desires wherever they go. But as you get older, your eyes are going to begin to get blurry. Your awareness of the senses begins to get more erratic. And what's left are the, your intentions. Now, if we haven't trained our intentions, if all of our intentions have been focused on getting nice sights, smells, tastes, and sexual sensations, where are they going to go then? They're going to start turning in on themselves. This is why you have to give the mind good intentions, train the mind in good intentions as quickly as you can. Learning how to get the mind settled in, learning how to keep the mind alert, mindful, ardent in doing what is skillful. And when you train the mind to feed on that kind of food, then that kind of food can carry it all the way, even as your senses begin to decline. You've still got good food inside because of the habits you've developed in training the mind to f go only with good intentions and to leave its bad intentions aside. So make sure that you work on this every day, training the mind so that it goes where you want it to go and it does what you want it to do. One of the scariest things in the world is that people have minds that are out of control. It's scary not only to other people, but also scary to the people who are out of control, because those out of control minds can end up causing them a lot of suffering. So the first order of business is to get the mind to stay where you want it to stay. Make the breath comfortable so that this is a good place to stay. And then train the mind to stay here with it. Keep your attention right here. As for any other thoughts that come up, you say, well, not right now. I'm training in how to feed my mind rightly. When you're responsible for your own mind this way, that way you're taking care of your main responsibility in life. As the John Sowat used to say, each of us has only one person that we're responsible for. We're responsible for our own thoughts, words, and deeds. Our problem is that we abandon our real responsibilities and try to straighten other people out. We've got to take care of our own responsibilities first. When we do that, we're adding to the peace of the world, the well-being of the world, much better than if we try to straighten out the world on our terms. We're creating a good example for other people, and we're not adding any more suffering to the world. We're feeding ourselves well, responsibly.